All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well. Peace and blessings to the elect, sincere brothers of Israel out there that's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. All right, this lesson is going to be about being content um, and not chasing after money. All right, because, you know, I, uh, as a younger brother, you know, I, I struggle with a lot of thoughts of, you know, <laughs> getting a lot of money and trying to uh, uh, get like a, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, get a lot of riches and spend a, spend a lot of money, all right? Because, you know, I, me being young and starting to go to work young, at a young age, I'm not, I'm around older Jakes, and they they always talk about, you know, if I was that age again, I'd be, you know, fucking bitches, uh, you know, spending money, traveling, going to different places, this, that, and the third. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, you know, th those demons come to me, you know, get in my head, like, I should do that. You know, I, sh I should be, you know, traveling more, getting paid per diems and stuff. But then I have to, you know, balance myself out, battle those demons with uh, the scriptures, such as this one. Uh, this is Proverbs 30, verse 8. It says, remove far from me vanity and lies. You know, I, like, <laughs> cast out those demons. Vanity and lies. You know, because people want to say, oh yeah, you're young, you can, you know, be wild. You don't have to worry about settling down till later. But in fact... You know, just the op the, the Bible t tells you the opposite. You know, the, the scriptures tell you to remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. You know? Uh, continuing on, it says, give me neither poverty nor riches. All right? So, you know, you, you don't want to be broke. You know, you don't want to be homeless. But at the same time, you don't want to be a, a, a sellout celebrity getting paid millions and millions of dollars or thousands of dollars, if that. You know, because if if you win the lottery tomorrow, you know, be honest with yourself. You think you you'd go out and preach on Saturday? I'm I'm gonna get a next scripture after I fi finish this up. Uh, it says, "Feed me with food convenient for me." You know, because you don't you don't want to overindulge in, in food or or whatever uh, uh, comforts this society has to offer. You know, uh, uh, whether it be entertainment or or <clears throat> uh, drinking or eating, you don't want to over overindulge in these uh, in activities because you you'll wind up getting you know getting addicted to them and, and falling out the truth. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, Matthew chapter six. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, and it reads, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon means like money. You know, you can't serve the most high and serve money. You know? So, I mean, you you trying to... Like, basically, it's impossible to be this rich celebrity and, and also be you know a righteous uh, 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 man well, I won't say it's impossible but it's hard you know uh, Matthew 19 <clears throat> this is uh, Matthew chapter 19 verse <clears throat> verse 24 it says and again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. You know, <clears throat> because yeah, have you ever seen a camel go through an eye of a needle, a little teeny ass needle? No. So, I mean, it, it, it's hard. It's hard for a. Uh, 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 um, a rich man, a wealthy man, uh, to be saved, 
you know, because he has a good on this side. He feels that there's no, you know, he, he's good. Like he he doesn't have he doesn't have the reason to get right. But a righteous man is gonna realize that all these riches and all this this bullshit is temporary. You know, so I mean they they won't uh, uh, strive to build up that 401k or whatever, or get paid by the boatloads. You know, the, the righteous man is going to ask for his daily bread. He's not going to be concerned about what tomorrow holds for him. Um, I'm going to get First uh, <clears throat> Timothy chapter 6. This is First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6, and it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, righteousness. And, and that, that goes into uh, discipline, too. You know, when you're very disciplined, you know, and you're content, you're satisfied with whatever situation you're in, that takes discipline to, to be content. You know, I'm going to look up that word content real quick. In a state of peaceful happiness, uh, satisfied. All right, let's let's go to Adam online. Uh, to rest or be satisfied, to give satisf satisfaction to, uh, contain, um, to hold together and close, with together to hold. Um, contained and satisfied you know so so when you're it, it, well, I'm gonna read the scripture again it says uh, the godliness with contentment is great gain you know because <clears throat> you know you being righteousness and you being uh, 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 satisfied with that righteousness that's a great gain all right let's see uh, the noun that this is what I needed to uh, read it says state of mind which results from satisfaction with present circumstances and and you know that that you have to have that at all times even at your low points you still have to be satisfied with the present circumstances and you know why uh, you should be satisfied is because you know what's coming all right you know what what the treasures have uh, uh, in the future if, if you are satisfied with that thing you know, it, as long as you, you endure until the end and you're satisfied with whatever comes to you and this temporary bullshit kingdom, whether it be hell or, or you know, a little bit of comfort at some times, you still have, have to be content until we get to the kingdom. And then and then that's, you know, when, when playtime is. All right. But for now, we just got to buckle down and, and hold on tight and get through this roller coaster ride, man. Um, I'm going to read verse uh, 9. It says, The day that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. You know, when, whenever you start to see that money stops, uh, uh, pile up uh, in your bank account, you know, you, you get tempted, man. Whenever you get uh, uh, popular or something and all the girls come to you, you get tempted. You know, some of those women might have uh, 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 dudes, and then you fall into that trap. You know how how women are, man. They take everything. They they take your time and resources. I'm saying, and not not just women, but whatever you know, video games. You can get, start getting addicted to video games. You start buying more and more. You know, there's people that that end up spending like thousands of dollars on on an app or some shit. You know, you got to be satisfied with, you know, what you have. You know, with, with, with you know, what, whatever the most high uh, uh, situation has you in, you have to be satisfied with it. All right. Uh, it says, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, 
with drawn, drawn men and destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know? The, it says the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? You know, when, whenever you start to get that, that uh, covetous uh, spirit about these, these celebrities or whatever, you want to live that ballin' lifestyle, you'll, you'll start to want to do anything for money. You know, there's people that just grind, grind, grind. They, they end up working like 70 hours out of a week or some crazy bullshit like that. They're away from, from, you know, their friends and family just to get money stacked up just so when they come back home, they can, they can ball out and then they have to go do it again. Man, it's bullshit. Whether it's five days out of the week and then they spend the check on the weekend or if they grind out two months and then spend their check in one month and go back. It's the same bullshit, man. And you shouldn't covet after that bullshit. Alright? Um... But the scriptures also say this. Um, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 12. It says, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. The excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. You know? So money is a defense. So, I mean, you should, you should you know, look at it as that. Don't look at it as as as, uh, uh, as a power of this this uh, society. Because when you start thinking that, then you're going to start serving that power, all right? Because to an extent, yeah, money is power in this society. You got more money, you can afford a lot more stuff. You can afford all the women and and, and cars and houses, or whatever. But you got to look at it as an uh, as an a defense, you know. I've been kind of watching this uh, uh, these people in this uh, minimalism movement, you know, where they they minimize their um, uh, basically things like materialistic things in their lives. You know, they basically have a have they they create a budget of like what they can eat. <clears throat> throughout the week to minimize on their food uh you know their water bill electricity they set up like candles around the house they just like candles for the light and uh you know they shower you know once a day you know reasonable stuff and they eat you know and it's just enough and then they they save a lot of money so whenever something does come up you know they they got enough to you know just and then they go back to their normal lifestyle. You know, they're not looking to to, to get all this stuff. And that, that's the same mindset you should be in. You know, minimize all the materialistic things. You know, uh, you know, but at the same time, don't be over-righteous. Because we do have to balance ourselves out. But you, uh, you know, with that being said, don't add sin unto sin. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, next scripture. Um, Psalms 37. This is Psalms 37 and 4. And it says, After it a voice roareth. Uh, that's not the right scripture. Oh, I'm in Job, that's why. It's like you. Yeah, Psalms 37 and 4. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thine height, of, of thine heart, Salakia. 
tongue twister. You know, if if you're if you're looking to please the Lord, if that's all you take pleasure in, then the Most High is going to give you everything your heart's desire, and not what your flesh desires. All right, you know, because your flesh desires, you know, because what whatever you you're into or whatever your hobbies are in this society, it all leads to wickedness anyway. You know, because you know I've been thinking about this a lot. Like the trade that I got into was electrician work because I wanted to know how that stuff worked, you know, and, you know, <clears throat> coding and, and, you know, techno technology and fixing stuff. But, you know, this devil does it the wrong way, I've come to realize, because all this uh, uh, electricity, you know, it, it fucking, when you get hit by it, you get shocked, you get burned, radiation, all sorts of shit. But if you think about it, you know, we're going to get uh, 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 the righteous way to that kind of power. Because if you think about it, you know, uh, there's a different type of electricity running through your body right now. And it starts up here in your mind, in your spirit. You know, the scriptures say that it's a, 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 your spirit is a flame of fire. You know, not, not trying to get deep or anything, but, you know, the, the, we're going to get all this wisdom so-called wisdom and knowledge of the elements and stuff that esau has right now but we're gonna have it in righteousness because his is like on a, his is a carnal power but we're gonna have that spiritual power that gives life all his his technology it is it, carnal in it and it brings death and you see all these poles the, the, the electric towers, man, those are given off, you know, and you can do research on this 5G technology, look at all the dangers of that, but uh, I'm going to end it with uh, Ecclesiasticus, also known as the Book of Sirach. Alright, Sirach chapter 18. Uh, verse 31 and it says uh, it says if thou givest thy soul the desires that please her she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee or I'll start up one it says go not after thy lust but refrain thyself from thine appetites you know fast that's what it comes down to is fasting you know, with, refrain from all this bullshit. Refrain from the lust and appetites that this world has to offer. You know? It says, "Go uh, uh, If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughingstock to thine enemies. You know? So, I mean, if, if, if you got this hunger all the time, and you can never be full and you just keep eating it, you're just trying to fill your stomach, you're going to end up fat as shit, man. But when you when you put that under subjection, and you rule over that that desire, that gives you power, man. That, that, that's a that's like a form of spiritual power. You're saying, no, I'm not 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 right now. I can wait. I'm putting the Lord first. You know, let let me get this quick lesson in. Let me, let me put a lesson together before I in, indulge in, in in you know whatever my desire is. Or I shouldn't say indulge, but before I, you know, <clears throat> balance myself out, you know, let, let me let me read read a few chapters before I play the play video games. You know, whatever. But with that, that's that's all I had. Um, I hope this video was edifying. Till next time, shalom.